Hey, welcome back to Dig Drive DIY. Today marks the fifth trip I'm making over to my current job in progress. I always think these jobs are gonna be real quick, real easy, but here we are. But I think this is the tail end of it. I gotta take a couple buckets of stone over there to get it finished up, and then I'll, I'll fill you in on what exactly we're doing here. Yeah, I sold my black truck, so I gotta make the Jeep my pickup for now. That's another story for another video. Dig Drive DIY. I was over there the first time when it was much colder and we were trying to find kind of the root of the problem. So what I think has happened is their geothermal empties into this pond. So it runs all the time. It's clear full. The trees have plugged up the drainage pipes or the tiles so that this water cannot escape. So the plan is to dig it up. So we were over there the first time, just kind of looking for the problem. Fortunately, we had some, some information and it made the job a little bit easier because of it, but I should probably start with telling you why we're doing this in the first place. I need a little bit more background. I'm making an effort to not assume that everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people that haven't been exposed to some of this stuff. So as you might be able to tell, it is incredibly flat where we live. This was a prehistoric lake bed. Actually over in Ohio, it was called the Black Swamp. And at one time, this would have all been underwater. The ground is such that it holds water. It's got a heavy clay base. Clay has low permeability, meaning water doesn't move through it very easily. Okay, I want you to imagine that this tub represents our subsoil layer. This is hard clay. Everything above would be topsoil. It has higher permeability. There's 12 to 18 inches of topsoil around here, depending on where you dig. You can imagine that this sponge and this topsoil would hold quite a bit of water, but then obviously the tub would keep it from running out. Well, the clay does have some permeability. I mean, it's not 100%. So here's our subsoil, our topsoil, and we're gonna simulate what happens during a rain event. The topsoil can soak up quite a bit of water. It holds a lot but obviously the rain is coming much, much faster than what the subsoil can let it out. This is a demonstration of what the farmers deal with around here when it rains. Oh, here comes another rain. We just had a rain. The topsoil is already soaked, so it only took, it took much less of a rain to overcome the topsoil this time. So you might be asking, well, then how do you deal with it? Well, this is where drainage comes into play. Around here, we call it pattern tiling. I say the word tile all the time and people wonder what the heck I'm talking about. I'm talking about corrugated pipe. Pipes that are buried below the ground about 30 inches deep or so and they'll carry some of that water. But I'm going to show you why we call it tile. This is an example of a clay tile and this would have been made out of the clay subsoil that we have around here. Back in the olden days they would fire these clay pipes and they were about 12 inches long. They would put them in the ground end to end and then they were somewhat permeable they would draw water. It would actually seep through the tile walls themselves. This is a standard four inch tile that you might find in a lot of farm fields. Here's a smaller three inch. This is a tiny little two inch tile. Some of them were hexagonal and had multi sides. Here's one I call this one a horseshoe tile. And then when tile started to fall out of favor and they weren't making it as much anymore, they switched to concrete. So here is a concrete example. And here is a perforated tile. This one has tiny little slits in it all throughout the length of the tile, the pipe. This is what typically gets installed in the farm fields around here. It can be black, it can be yellow, it can be white. We put this below this topsoil. Okay, we give the water a place to go, an outlet. That way it doesn't have to go down hundreds of feet through the dirt to make its way out of the soil. All right, let's simulate that with our subsoil layer. Here's my trenching machine. This is how I'm going to put in my tile lines. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but that's going to simulate our tile lines. Usually the farmers put tile in the ground about every 50 feet. They're doing it a little more closer together nowadays, but back in the day it was always 50 to 40 feet apart. That's what they are around here, about 50 feet apart. We just got done tiling the field. Here comes the rain. The more we take care of our topsoil and use proper farming techniques, the better job it does of holding and retaining water. But we don't want the water for too long. The perforations we put in the bottom of our subsoil here, 
is allowing the water to pass through real easily. And remember the tile is sitting on a very low permeable layer itself. So it kind of seals up the bottom of the tile. And so the ribs fill up on the bottom and the water is able to flow across through there because actually the subsoil is holding all the water in below it. The water gets to this level and then just travels out the pipe. So this is why farmers around here in a lot of areas that have a similar soil structure like to install pattern drainage. It gets the water out of the fields that would otherwise lay wet all the time. If we're lucky, when the farmer puts the drainage in, they make a map. We call it a tile map and it shows locations from the edge of the road or from a landmark and you can measure and if you have a problem, you can try to use a probe and find that tile and we have to do that all the time. You can sometimes find it with aerial imagery. You can see it from the satellites, but if the farmer made a map, we're in good shape. The problem we have is there's things that damage the underground drainage systems all the time. This tile can get compromised in different ways. We can have a bad connection and it allows dirt to get inside. Some of that old clay tile, it breaks down over time and it creates holes in the ground that we have to fix. There's trees too close or roots from, from tall vegetation gets too, too deep and plugs the tile. Well, that's what we're kind of dealing with today. Obviously, the corner of this field, as you might be able to tell, is very, very wet, and we're gonna be looking for the problem. So the first thing I did was hook up Louie to the trailer, loaded up the backhoe. I grabbed a lot of parts and pieces and things I thought I might need in an effort to fix this problem, and uh, we headed over there to tackle it. So believe it or not, this is the driest this has been in a while. There's actually a place for me to walk out here, which there hasn't been in the past. So it's gonna be muddy though. We're gonna probably slop up the backhoe, I'm sure, but there's more rain coming. So we wanna get in here and see if we can get this opened up. But I'm actually gonna start down here at the flag where we found it with the probe. And well, I'll explain what I'm thinking when I get down there. What I think is going on is the neighbor here isn't the landowner, but they have a house lot. They have a pond, as you can see, but they have a geothermal heating system and it constantly pumps water out of the geothermal system. It uses water from the ground to heat and cool. As their geothermal system runs, it pumps water out into the pond and it's supposed to go into a drain tile and go down below the ground. Well, I think these trees right here, the roots have plugged the tile and they don't allow the drain to work properly. We're gonna dig it up and see if we can find any plug pipes and hopefully fix it. All right, we are almost down to the tile. You can see the trench by the discolored dirt in there. I mean, the tile trench. And I already see roots like sticking up out of the tile. So I think it's full clear down to here. That's a tree root. So we got water here, but. And this is probably taking a little bit of water at a time, but it's just, this tells me that those roots, they're, they're coming, they're originating inside. Well, they probably grew down into there, but. Okay, I'm gonna separate the topsoil from the subsoil. I'm gonna put the topsoil over here on this side try to save it and put that back on top and then all the subsoil I'll put on the other side of the trench. Just, if you can, it's a little bit more effort but it's better. not terrible. That is definitely roots. But those are dead. The idea is to hook onto it there with non-perforated corrugated pipe and replace all this perforated tile with non-perforated so that the roots are less likely to penetrate the tile. So I dig down to where I'm about right on top of the tile and kind of compressing it as I dig across the top of it. And then I'll break it at some place and then try to peel it all out and that's going to be heavy because it's full of stuff that's probably really heavy huh i tried to get it pretty even all the way across the trench bed like right there the tile so right there the tile's exposed and it isn't back here so i try to get the trench all the same level pretty close first and then i'll try to expose it all at once
So I think we are getting into the heart of the matter right now. This pass right here has been really full of roots and I see a lot of water backed up where I've exposed the top of the tile, which means the, the easiest place for the water to go is up instead of through the tile. So it's gonna start to really bubble in here. Oh yeah. Hoping you can see that tile down there. I can see the top of it the whole way. All right, so we have made it down past the trees. There really isn't any root penetration down here so much, but we've decided just to replace the whole tile in case we find something, you know, we hate to skip this section here and then discover there was something plugging it up here. So we're gonna go all the way to this, what we think is the pond drain. Greg's got my mud boots on, so I'm just gonna have to observe from the observation deck, I guess. Not by me. All right, so we dug all the way down to here where we thought maybe there was an outlet under the ground for the pond and didn't didn't find anything hooked up to the tile down there. So we're just going to put a drain in to the tile and stub it up inside the property line so we can catch this water that's leaking and try to dry up this corner. So I'm going to see if I can get the backhoe wrestled up through here and then we'll dig a little trench in here for this tile. We got all that pipe put in the ground. I almost said tile. And now we're gonna try to relieve this pond. And then we'll put a T in it and give it a place to relieve itself. I think it's just leaking. There's a lot of muskrat evidence around here too. So the muskrats could have tunneled right at water level and, but we're gonna give it a little outlet. And then before I leave, I'm gonna try to relieve some of that water into the trench so it can maybe dry up a little bit tomorrow. Okay, I built a little dam back there to hold the water back. It's definitely muskrat damage, but we're still gonna put a tile in here just to give it a place to relieve. I had to run to Greg's shop for a tool run. We need a Sawzall. Does this work? Oh yeah. All right, now we can cut the pipe in with ease. So this is G&K where I work and where we're working on that tile is right there. All right, we've done what we can, and we're just gonna let it dry. Dug some, some relief trenches to try to get some of this water out of the field, surface water. It's already went down a lot. It's gonna be windy tonight. We'll see what it does tonight and tomorrow, let it drain out. I'll come back and backfill it and see what we're left with. Right now I gotta head home, eat supper, and then I'll be back tomorrow. All right. It's a new day, we're back. Looks like it's dried a lot, actually. All the standing water is drained off. It's not dry enough to drive through there yet, but some big improvements. We can get this, uh, this pipe back filled. The other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna try to fix up his muskrat tunnel through here a little bit more. I overdug this trench right here and I packed some clay in in an attempt to kind of plug up the muskrat hole and shut off the water that was continuously flowing. And it looks like it, it did pretty good, but that muskrat hole goes across here like this. And you can see there's, there's actually multiple different holes. Right there's one. That's the primary one right there, I think. 
that's the hole. But I'm gonna dig this up and see if I can kinda pack some dirt in there. Here you can see the undermining of the muskrat hole. There's water running out from under there. That's that trench right there. So I'm just gonna expose all this and then dig through it and pack it back shut. It's the only way to do it, I think. I got that dug up and kind of packed back in there. We'll let it dry out and they can work the top. This guy actually has an 855 with a loader on it. So he is more than equipped to tackle this trench right here. That'd be a nice fun little project. But when I back fill these trenches with the backhoe, I like to do the first scoop or two into the trench to kind of start it. And then I will start to use the backhoe almost like a bulldozer. I will fill the bucket full of dirt and then not dump it on every time I go forward and backwards because it just, it kills a lot of time 